go to Wade. Please welcome to the blue corner, Matthew Costello. All right, you guys ready for some big boys? Because we have a heavyweight scrap. And by heavyweights, I mean really, really heavy. We'll talk about uh, a weight miss here in just a second. But first, Matty Costello making his way out to the cage. First time inside the Fury cage. Has finished two of his last three fights. And he is ready to show out. Now, he looks scary, but... It, I'm, I'm telling you, this guy is technical and scrappy. I actually trained him quite a bit back in the day at GBS Chase. He's been in the mix a very long time. He's been very dedicated. He's got more experience than his record shows. He's 3-0 in MMA, but he's got a lot of kickboxing matches. I, I'll tell you, man, this guy, he's, 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 he's the full package with mixed martial arts. You'll see, man, he's got a chin on him. He's got heavy hands. He's got a great kicking game. I was looking forward to seeing this fight. It's funny you mentioned that chin. I went back and watched his last fight, and he got nailed in the first fight. Like, he just looked rocked, and he just kept moving forward like it was nothing. Yeah, it's wild. This is what a heavyweight should look like, by the way. That's a scary dude. <laughs> All right, he is inside, so let's get his opponent. Here's Wayne Leggett. Please welcome to the red corner, Randy Gonzalez. Okay, I talked about really, really big guys. Randy stepped on the scales yesterday at 277.8. Yeah, I didn't know that was a thing. I mean, I, 265, so I'm like, all right, that's easy to stay under. I guess not. And what's crazy, like, I mean, the scale out of there within a certain percentage of body weight. I, I've never seen this before, and I've seen it in a lot of fights in my day. Yesterday when I got our, you know, we, we what we do is we got our weigh-ins, we get a sheet with all the weights from uh, our team here at Fury, and I was looking at it, I was like, man, maybe that was just a typo, but this morning I confirmed it, and it was, we did get in that 277.8 fight, does move forward, and uh, yeah, that is the biggest weight discrepancy that I remember on this card, and it's with the big boys. Yeah. Or it, it, I hear at Fury, not on this card, but just in general at oh, Fury. Yeah. I mean, me. I, I know some, sometimes there's a super heavyweight division, which is like 265 and up, but I mean, that's usually for like gimmick fights in Japan and stuff. But I mean, I mean, this is, this, this is some big boys in this cage. Both well, guys pretty experienced too. It's yeah. been fun. Randy Gonzalez, two and one record. Uh, coming off that loss to Miles Banks, who was supposed to be on this card making this pro debut for his ACL, has actually been fighting with a torn ACL for the last year plus, and finally got it checked out. Turns out he, it is a tear, but uh, Randy Gonzalez is the story here. We'll talk a little bit about him in a second, but let's get our official introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, your next fight, brought to you by Space City Collective, is scheduled for three rounds in the Fury Amateur Series Heavyweight Division. Introducing your first competitor fighting out of the blue corner. This freestyle fighter stands six feet one inch tall, and he weighed in officially at 263.8 pounds. Fighting out of Houston, Texas, he holds a perfect amateur record of four wins, no losses. This is Matthew Matty Ice Costello. And introducing his opponent across the cage, fighting out of the red corner. This freestyle fighter stands six feet tall and he weighed in at 277.8 pounds. Fighting out of Corpus Christi, Texas, he holds an amateur record of two wins, only one defeat. This is Randy Gonzalez. Your referee in charge, JJ Ferraro. Our quick tail of the tape, we talked about that weight, 277.8 for Randy Gonzalez, and the height, height reach, or excuse me, height advantage for Costello in reach for Gonzalez. Blue glove for Costello, red for Gonzalez. And uh, just talking about Randy, he's also a brawler. We saw in the Miles Banks fight, he just kept moving forward. And you look, you, you ran into one of the most talented heavyweights in Miles Banks, but uh, Randy had some really good moments in that fight as well. So this is going to be a fun one. I, I, I don't see this leaving the first round, gentlemen. Notice, notice the volume of Matty. I mean, he, he doesn't like super load up. He'll just touch, touch, touch. He'll like throw double right hands and stuff. I mean, he's quick. And he's active, which looking at him, you wouldn't think he's quick or active. You'd think he's just a bomber, like his opponent. But no, man, Matty's crafty. It's weird. It's, it's really cool and awful. Yeah, and he slips. He does a great job of slipping that head left, slipping that jab every time, and going right over the top. 
has landed a couple of times with that. Now you see him. Ooh, Ooh big, up big uppercuts. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, oh, good right hand. I mean, I think I maybe met him like nine years ago, eight years ago, and he's been at it since. He's been training a long time. Yeah, you can see Matt is very efficient, Alex. He's you know, he's not breathing hard. He's not he's, he's being very deliberate with his punches, but he's not overthrowing, like you said. I mean, you put a four-ounce glove on a 263-pound man, and he just touches you with it. It's going to bust you up. And that's where that, that high volume over time really just can, can crush your face. Is that the mouthpiece that fell out or some tape? I can't tell. Quick, quick timeout. Yeah. We got a mouthpiece on the ground. All right, Maddie's mouthpiece. Back in. A little blood there on the face of Costello. Not sure if it's his or... I think he's bleeding out of his nose. nose. Couldn't tell there. And there's little uppercuts. They chip away. Yeah, when I heard that he missed by 10 pounds, I, I had to look. I was like, is he seven feet tall? <laughs> I mean... It doesn't look like he's, you know, he's, he looks like he's got some weight to, to shed there. There's a nice little slip. Matty slipped the jab and threw a right hand. I mean, look, at you can start to see the damage amounting on the face here of Gonzalez. Under one minute left. I mean, it's a three-minute round. We're about two minutes deep. And, I, and these guys have landed, you know, hard double-digit <laughs> numbers with the punches. Ooh. Good right hand there from Gonzalez. Oh my gosh, these guys are incredible. There's no quit in either of them. Good straight right there from Matt. And again, his knees are good. I mean, can Matty find a finish here in 20 seconds? Can Gonzalez connect with something big? I mean, it just takes one punch, any punch from either one of these dudes, and it lights out. Nice right hand again there for Matty. Ooh, oh, geez. straight yeah. right hand there. A little gift to go back to the corner with. Both guys bleed. <laughs> so I'm speculating I'm a veteran. I think this is a good assessment. I, I, I'm pretty sure Matt Schnell had to give the nickname Matty Ice. <laughs> I know they worked together for some time. Schnell, if you're watching, shoot me a message. Let me know if that's accurate. <laughs> So look at the volume here of, of, of Matty Ice. Just those those little framed uppercuts. Look, at he slips off the center line. Straight right hand. No load up. No extra motion. Just just efficient striking. Yeah, you see, he did take a few shots, but they weren't extremely hard shots. But you know, did a little bit of damage. But you know, the, the bigger punches, the the more volume was obviously by Matt. I think I have him, you know, pretty handily at Matt Costello in this first round. Yeah, same. And, like, it, it, I'll tell you guys, the double right hand punch is weird. You're, you're not really supposed to do it from a defensive standpoint, but you saw the highlight. Matt threw the right hook and it missed, and then he just double dipped on that hook, and the second one really met its mark. By the way, yeah, Miles Banks was supposed to make that debut uh, on our main card. Uh, fight no longer on. He decided to get ACL surgery, which good for him, man. He, yeah, I was also done. happy with that decision because yeah. his knee was really busted. Up. Yeah. Yeah, and there comes a point where you, you know, you as an athlete, you want to go, but there comes a point where if you go too much longer, oh. you're going to do some damage. It's yeah. irreversible. Nice little right hook to the inside there from Gonzalez. A little skip knee as well from Gonzalez. Misses. Now we're seeing a little more heavyweight style. Dude's just kind of trading. Nice left hook on the break there. And then props for these two big old heavyweights. This is not an easy pace. And we're in the second round. And they still look full of energy, full of life. Good left hand there. Good yeah. right hand return. I mean, look at You see that stick his tongue out, walk forward and throw some punches. Hey, big knee again. Big man sprawl. Excellent sprawl there from Matt. Yeah, this is a, a bad mistake. spot. For Gonzalez, that's a lot of weight to lift on both ends. And, like, I know he prefers to kickbox. Matt is not a bad grappler. Well, and here it's about control, Alex. No grappling involved here except for the weight in the right position. Gonzalez able to get up. But, get it, up. man, it looked like he, <laughs> he was going to mount him or, or something. It looked like he was moving over oh. to kind of put that leg over. Good left hand. Gonzalez seems to have favored the southpaw stance now. He's found some success with that straight left. And I think also I saw Gonzalez shaking out his shoulder. I think he may have overextended a punch a little bit, and that's why he's switching. 
to use that uh, as his jab hand now. You know, I noticed some weird behavior in the first round, actually. Yeah, yeah. So I think he's switching to try to use that as a jab. Boys, you got you to watch out for some blood here. These guys are both leaking, and they're swinging. I mean, see, this is that surmounted volume from Maddie that's starting to really pay dividends. I mean, you see Gonzalez in a more defeated posture back on the cage. Still very much so in this fight, but, I mean, that will wear on you worse than you think. Under one minute left in round two. Maddie Ice trying to look for that finish. Losing a little bit of power behind those punches as well for Maddie Ice. Oh, big knees. Oh, big right hand. Gonzalez oh. puts himself right back in this fight, though. Yeah, and you see he's just letting the slobber come out of his mouth. These are heavyweights, <laughs> man. I love it. <laughs> we a quick timeout. Find out why probably mouthpiece again. I'll tell you, he drops that a third or fourth time. They're going to start to penalize him. Yeah, and he has an extremely small mouthpiece. It, like, covers the front of his teeth. It's probably barely, just barely legal. I think they started an insta, insta eye poke. Yeah. It, it, good, good for Costello. He told JJ, so he had poked him in the eye. JJ said, doesn't matter. Let's fight. Oh, oh, you can hear those punch. Oh, my. Oh. Ooh, Costello just kind of <laughs> leading with his head there, <laughs> oh, like man. distracting him with a punch. <laughs> you know it's a good fight when punches have multiple senses. You can hear them. You can <laughs> see stuff flying out of them. Oh. You can smell the blood. Ah, good for these wow. boys. I mean, we're looking at fight of the night potential right here. Yeah, this I, is a heavyweight fight. I didn't think that fight would be leading the first round. I'm glad we're about to get a third round, man. Honestly, if I had to make a prediction, I was going to pick Maddie for like a second or third round TKO. Just because that heavyweight volume is rare to see. But when you get guys who know how to do it, man, it'll really tax you out. See that yeah, big, Max yeah. having a ball in there. <laughs> Sticking that tongue out. Yeah, it's weird, Alex. We're at the end of the second round. It's the first time I've seen him look a little bit winded. I mean, he, he so far, you know, we can kind of tell from here that they're biting down their mouthpiece a little bit, their mouth is closed, and they're still throwing punches. They're still in fairly good cardio shape. That mouth's open. They're trying to breathe through that mouthpiece. That's a sign that they're a little bit tired and that they're starting to wear down. So, hey, hey yeah. announcer cam, look, everyone. Hi, Mom. Make sure you're watching us throughout the night. We're going to have our reactions. Maybe we'll get a big reaction here if there is a finish in round three. Just make sure you guys don't meme us afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> That's all I ask for our YouTube viewers. The best in the business. Thank you guys for watching us and commenting throughout the prelim broadcast. We'll be going live on UFC Fight Pass at 4.30 p.m. for Fury FC 74. And Gonzalez comes out firing. He looks a little refreshed between the second and third round. A back round. fist into a hook into another back fist. This boys, now <laughs> we are brawling. <laughs> also on Facebook, if you're watching on the Fury FC Facebook page, you have questions for us throughout the broadcast. Let us know. Our team is in the comments making sure we're answering everything. Man. Gonzalez starting to land here. Oh, oh, oh right big shots. Yeah, and Matt fires back. I think I think Matt's starting to kind of feel the starting to feel the pace of the fight. He's starting the to right feel that extra so. ten pounds, Alex. And I'll tell you that that makes a difference. I mean, it does. You guys got your blood sombreros. Ooh, be needed. Man, last few weeks for us has started to feel like a Gallagher comedy show. Yeah. <laughs> You're gonna I was just thinking rainbows. that, and I was like, I don't want to age myself by making a Gallagher <laughs> comment here. <laughs> <laughs> but we should be wearing rain ponchos yeah. up here in the front row. This cage is a little bit better. There's about two feet, three feet in between us and the cage. But the one we had last week, man, we were right up against it. We'll have in a couple weeks up in Dallas, too. I like that Gillies. Oh, yeah. I, I love, like that yeah, venue. Yeah, Gillies is great. Oh, man, Gonzalez kind of walking away. 120 left. Can Matty Ice find this finish here? Can Randy connect with a big punch? Ooh. Both guys flailing oh, a little bit here. Landing those big shots. Ooh, Matt trying to get this one to the ground. Felt a little momentum slipping off of that yeah. standing at <laughs> yeah. nonchuck almost fell. 
Yeah, it's hard to get those feet back in front of you whenever you're trying to drag somebody down. <laughs> See Gonzalez in on a single leg. I do believe he's catching his breath right here. Stella does a good job getting that underhook, getting him back up high. Give some props to the uh, engineers of the cage as well, almost 600 pounds up against it. Yeah, I've got a friend that fought uh, in the UFC at heavyweight, Brad Imes, and, you know, we played football together uh, in our mid-20s, and, you know, he was 295, 300 pounds, and he fought, he's six foot eight, and, and he was ripped in, and he fought Rashad Evans in the fi in the finale of season two of The Ultimate Fighter at 250 pounds, wow. and he was just lean, and he was like, my biggest regret is going down to 250 pounds. He feels like if he would have weighed 265, it would have just been too big for Rashad, which oh, I thought he won the fight, but... Guys are swinging. A little what a wonder to, to take fight. us home. <laughs> Man. Good fight for those heavyweights. Did not expect us to see the third horn there in this <laughs> yeah. fight. I am shocked we're going to the judges' scorecards, but here we are. We'll see how the judges score this fight in just a second. I think uh, just subjectively, 29-28 uh, Costello. Possibly 30-27, but I think uh, Gonzalez had the better strikes in that third round. Yeah, he, I think Gonzalez definitely won the third round. He came out kind of invigorated, you know, was had, found, a, found a little gas there in the third round. Started out the round here, got, landed some good punches. But man, Costello is just like, I'm just gonna let these land so I don't have to hold my hands up here for very long. Here he goes, taking a few punches. Just trying to step back out of them, nice slip there. He comes out with a flurry of his own. <laughs> Lands a few, takes a few. That's the story of this fight, Alex. Both guys landed a few, took a few. <laughs> As uh, we get our scorecards in, Wayne is making his way to the cage. Alex, I want to ask you about this. I heard this on the Fury Unleashed podcast this week. The canvas difference from the UFC canvas to the canvas here at Fury FC. I want to talk about that throughout the broadcast. Fury Unleashed podcast. Make sure you subscribe. The best of MMA and non MMA related topics featuring Wayne Leggett, Rich Burmaster, Eric Garcia, and the superstar Diego Reyes. Get it everywhere you get your podcast. All right, let's see how the judges scored this. Here's Wayne Leggett. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of combat, we go to the judges' scorecards for a decision brought to you by OnlyFans. All three judges scored the fight 29 28, declaring your winner by unanimous decision. Matthew Costello! Perfect record for Maddie Costello. Maddie Ice, the crowd is losing it. Man, what a crowd here for Maddie Ice. I love it.